Okay, and for our next speaker, we will jump to the other side of the Atlantic, to our lovely country, to the Netherlands, and Dirk Ferberg, Educational Manager at, Nurio, at Curio sorry, Technique and Technology College, will present us some of the activities in relation to healthcare. So, Dirk, please, whenever you want. I'm very glad to tell you a little bit about our college, uh, what we do, and the challenges we face at the moment. Uh, before we get into that, I want to give you a little bit of a background story. I'm the educational manager of the nursing department at Curio College. At Curio, it's quite a big college in the south of the Netherlands, and we actually, uh, actually have three different sectors. We have a technological uh, sector, an economical, and a healthcare and well-being sector. Uh, and like I said, I'm in the health and well-being sector, I'm responsible for all courses that lead up to a nursing degree. So in total, uh, that's about 900 students. And in the next 10 minutes or so, I want to take you with me in my dream. And maybe that sounds a bit childish or romantic. I'm convinced that every educational change starts with a dream. It starts with a vision. And my dream is quite simple. I want us to be able to create specific learning journeys that best suit students' needs. So they're best suited, uh, suited for the job we train them for, and they have the tools to develop and grow personally, not only during their study period, but also after that. Uh, the thing we call a lifelong learning, one of the SDGs, of course. And to do this, we must have two things that every school or college should have in the 21st century. And that is being flexible and being adaptive. We find ourselves in an ever so fast changing world with social changes as well as technological changes. To be able to cope with this, every educational course must be adaptive to its surroundings so that there isn't a gap between the world within the school and the real world. And we must be flexible so we can, uh, we're able to adjust to these changes. Um, when I started at, uh, at this college, uh, I have a technical background. Uh, I started here about two years ago and there were three different teams uh, providing courses that led up to a nursing degree. So a lot of the same work was being done two, three times by different people. So the first thing we did is combining these teams, work more efficiently and make sure that more of our time is spent for the students uh, and on his or her learning journey. And as you may know, co combining and changing teams is always a difficult task, uh, but we made some good progress. And maybe it doesn't look like much, but this is actually the fruit of our labor. And here you can see the program which every student follows when they want to become a nurse. And without getting into too much detail, we divided our program into different modules. And each module, we combined all the knowledge and the lesson materials of all the different teachers. So we made uh, some sort of a central library that serves as a base for every learning journey. All the teachers have access to the same library uh, based on the need of a particular student or a group of students, uh, they create a learning journey. And we do this for all type of courses, for all the courses we have. So it doesn't matter if it's a school-based learning program, uh, training on the job, or it's more of a hybrid form. We all create a learning journey from the same library. And uh, it looks something like this. When a group of students already have a lot of knowledge on a particular, particular subject, we shorten that part of the program. Uh, when we have, uh, or when they have no or very little knowledge, we enhance that part of the program. Uh, it can also be that a health institution has a particular question or subject that they want us to pay extra attention to. So in this way, it's very easy for us to really work together with the health institutions 
to make the best Sudoku program and that we can really be flexible as well as adaptive. Um, these changes really helped us the last year considering the COVID crisis, especially being in the healthcare sector. It's been quite a difficult time, but also a time in which we've really uh, seen some extraordinary things, things we were only able to do because we were adaptive and we were flexible. For instance, uh, we had a lot of students working in COVID departments within healthcare institutions. Of course, this can be very stressful for the students, um, but teachers made sure that the program for these students changed, so it took a little bit less time and could be done more remotely. In this way, uh, the students could keep working, sometimes uh, even took on extra shifts within the healthcare institutions. Uh, and I can tell you it was very stressful for them, uh, but also a very uh, powerful learning period. And without these students, the Dutch healthcare system would have, uh, would have had a real, real big problem. So we're very, very proud of the students. Another thing we did was help with the vaccines. Uh, almost all of our students are trained in giving injections. Unfortunately, the Dutch government has some issues in supplying the vaccines, but once, once they're all there, uh, we're ready to uh, assist within the vaccination campaign. Some of our teachers also uh, insisted, assisted in the national health class. Uh, it's an initiative to quickly train people to do simple tasks within a healthcare institution. For example, we have people who used to work in the catering industry, who we trained to uh, in a short amount of time so they could quickly make the transfer to the healthcare institutions. So this also really helped because we had a lot of shortage of people within this sector. Uh, and last but not least, we've seen a very positive attitude toward the use of technology within healthcare, within the institutions as well as in our college. So for example, we have a project which uh, we use uh, smart glasses so students can see what it is that the healthcare workers see and are doing remotely. So they can uh, learn from that within the safety of the school. We can also use, uh, we also use technology like virtual reality to give students certain experiences, like clients who get violence, for example. In this way, we can train this in a safe environment. We can also use virtual reality to give a client a certain experience or call it a dream. So something that they really want. So let's say an elderly wants to go to the zoo, but he can't because he can't leave the institution. We can give him this experience by using virtual reality. And in this way, we can train the students by learning new technology, as well as working on their social skills. So in short, this is the, uh, these are the things that we were doing over the last, uh, the last period of time and how we uh, contribute to society. I want to thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions, uh, you can always send me an email. So thank you.